British Prime Minister Theresa May says the United Kingdom wants to grow trade on African continent as it prepares to leave the European Union by signing trade agreements with six African countries. May, battling to unite her divide, a divided Conservative Party over a plan to take Britain out of the European Union, is visiting South Africa, Nigeria and Kenya on her first official trip to the continent. Speaking on Tuesday in South Africa, May said Britain would make more scholarships available for brightest African students to support the continent's talented future leaders and decision. She wants Britain to become the biggest investor in Africa out of the group of seven nations, overtaking the United States by using the aid budget to help British companies invest on the continent. Now, for more perspective on UK-Africa relations, Mark Napier, Director of Financial Sector Deepening Africa, joins me live via Skype from Nairobi. Good evening, Mr. Napier. Good evening. Now, Teresa is saying uh, she wants to boost this uh, trade uh, relationship between uh, Africa and the UK and become uh, perhaps uh, uh, bigger than even the United States and perhaps the European Union. How, how can she possibly do that? <laughs> well, uh, there's no harm in, in trying and setting yourself some uh, proper ambitions. Um, I think the reality is that there's a, a great deal still to go, to go for in Africa, whether you're American, whether, whether you're a UK company. Um, part of the problem, though, is that the, um, the investment environment in, in Africa is, is very often um, suboptimal. Um, and what we need to do collectively is to work together to improve the investment environment that benefits um, UK companies as well as US companies or anybody else who wants to invest in, in Africa. And, and I think what was exciting about what Theresa May was saying is that um, there's an opportunity in a way to reset the, the relationship between um, the sort of larger Western powers and Africa and to put it on the basis of, of mutual interest. Um, yeah. And that, I think, is in many ways what the African countries want to see. They don't want to be patronized, as uh, President Kenyatta was, was saying in his BBC interview. They want to have the opportunity to trade and to be part of a global family. Yeah. Um, but in order to do that, you need to have uh, the kind of um, operating infrastructure in Africa that allows investors to come in um, and work uh, fruitfully. Now, let's face it, is uh, the UK trying to catch up with China? You know, China's big in Africa, it's big right there in Kenya. What's going on? Well, uh, <laughs> not, not catch up. I think we obviously do things very, very differently. I mean, we don't have the sort of funds that uh, the Chinese government uh, would put to work here. What we do have, though, is an enormous hinterland um, of uh, financial sector experience. And we can bring that to bear. Um, and my world is about financial sector development in order to encourage the investment to take place. So, so the vision that I think the prime minister was, um, was really trying to communicate is to say, it's not for governments to, to step in and provide money. And in reality, that's so not going to happen in the future with, with uh, governments um, in, in many parts of the world, um, you know, uh, having many other sort of priorities which they need to address. Mm -hmm. it's, it's much cleverer to use the sort of technical expertise that we have with a little bit of capital for sure, but to use the technical expertise that we have to crowd in the private sector, which has far more funding um, at its disposal um, than governments could ever hope to, to put on the table. Now, so when, it's a different kind of uh, concept, yes. but one I think that is potentially very powerful. Now, we know Britain has historical ties with some of the African countries, like Kenya, for example. Uh, what do you think was missed? What, some, what are some of the opportunities missed that uh, an organization like yours may want to bring uh, to the attention of the British government? Well, uh, a critical issue, of course, is, is that um, Africa has a very fast uh, growing and large population. And so if you dial forward um, 5, 10, 15 years, that's a very large market that if the development um, trajectory pans out, um, there are large numbers of people who are going to be coming on grid from an economic sense. And so from a retail banking point of view, that's a great opportunity for retail investors who want to get into the retail banking space. But I think uh, what's exciting, a lot of people in the financial sector field at the moment is the technology uh, opportunities or technology-led opportunities. 
And, and I think there is an opportunity to uh, bring uh, disruptive innovation to, to bear in Africa's financial markets, mm -hmm. where, which I, I think have been dominated for quite some time by incumbents who have perhaps grown used to relatively easy opportunities. Um, and so there is an opportunity with new technology um, and with uh, good um, investment support mm -hmm. for new providers to come in and really make a difference and do things Thank differently. You. Well, Mr. Napier, we appreciate your insight. Thank you very much.